Okay, I know I probably look like the end of the world, I've been working all day, um, but I'm trying to pump these AC videos out for you guys so I can help you out because I know the country, most of the country and most of the world still warm uh, for a good couple more months here. What we're going to talk about today is why looking at static pressures, like you see right here, the AC system off, it can be so misleading and why they're absolutely worthless unless you have a trained eye and special gauges for it. Um, so today I want to give you an example on this vehicle. We're going to go through, show you static pressures on a good fully charged system, and then we're going to show you, um, you know, a very low on refrigerant system. Uh, the same thing, static pressures and they're gonna look fine either way you look at it unless you have the trained eye. And this is the mistake and the argument, I guess you could say I get into with so many people uh, when I'm, they're trying, trying to help them diagnose their AC system over the internet. And even these shops that are jerking these, these people around there come to me, me for help. And they're saying, yeah, 60 PSI on the low side while the engine's running or, or whatever is okay. And the other big thing, like I said, is the static pressures. People misconstrue the static pressures as a system being charged when it's actually not. Um, you can tell a lot if you know what you're looking for without ever sucking a system out and putting it on a scale and measuring the amount of refrigerant that comes out. Um, so I'll show you that also on these specialty gauges like this. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to it. I'm really excited to show you this. Like I said, there's been a lot of great tips coming out, not just how to recharge your AC system like a lot of these guys just that put up on the web here. I want to help you diagnose it because there's a lot of different variables that can happen with these systems. Um, these AC systems, especially the newer ones, are very sensitive to the AC charge. So let's take a look. Now static pressures can be useful for the trained eye. Uh, you see this system right here has 100 PSI, both sides, of course they're equalized. Now this vehicle has been sitting in here fully charged and uh, you know, acclimatizing to the ambient temperature. So the vehicle and the ambient temperature is about the same at this point, it's been a couple hours. And what you have to realize is that a fully charged system will correlate, if it's charged properly for the size system, it'll correlate to the temperature, the ambient temperature, okay? So 100 PSI or so equals around 86, 87 degrees. And guess what? It's around 86 degrees in the shop here. Now, if you have diagnostic gauges like this, they're really cool because they give you the pressure, but they also give you the correlation there in the blue. Um, it'll tell you. So look at that 100 PSI equals around, like I said, 87 or so um, degrees. So it, it can be useful to the trained eye, but in general, they're absolutely useless. Now, like I said, this is a fully charged system. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna suck the system down, and then we're only gonna put in about two, three ounces of refrigerant back into there. And I'll show you the pressures once again on there. And like I said, if there, you have a trained eye, and you know the correlation between temperature and the refrigerant pressure, then you can tell. Otherwise, you'll still see pressure in the system with barely any refrigerant in there. And that's what throws a lot of people. And that's why I say don't even deal with static pressures. Ignore them. They are worthless, uh, especially to the untrained eye. All right, so let's go ahead and start the recovery process. Let it go through and suck it down. Okay, here we go. The system is fully sucked down, vacuumed out empty of refrigerant. At this point we're going to put in, you know, three ounces or so and I'll show you how the gauges look on here and how much it can be misinterpreted. Boom. Let it purge the air for a second here. Now initially, of course, it'll be high like that, uh, but once it goes through the system, of course, it'll settle. You'll see, a couple ounces in here. Hey, we got plenty of pressure in the system. Why is it not working? So let's let it finish. Now this is the classic mistake everybody makes. They hook up the pressure gauges or their little uh, can gauge that comes with the can and it has a basic low side gauge on it. 
they come over here and they read pressure in the system and they'll have a little green, yellow, and red on there on those little can pressure gauges, the little chibi ones. And hey, we're okay. We're at 60 PSI in here. No sweat. The system's fully charged. Now what? Okay. You just saw we only put three ounces into the system. This vehicle takes 25 ounces of refrigerant to operate properly. And you can see, unless you know what to read on these gauges or have these diagnostic gauges that give you the relationship between temperature and pressure, like this one does, you're gonna make the mistake of thinking the refrigerant is full and everything's fine. Especially in these TXV systems, watch. I'll start this vehicle up and the compressor will run and everything will look fine, okay? And you're gonna get even more confused because the TXV systems, the TXV will accommodate, it'll change and vary depending on the pressure in the system, the temperature, okay? Whereas the fixed orifice tube systems back in the day, the system would click on, off, on, off, on, off. So this system, you'll have pressure, you hook your gauges up, you go start the car, Pressure's coming on, it's spinning, it's not turning on and off, it's definitely coming on, okay? What's the problem? The problem still is refrigerant because static pressures, like I said, to the untrained eye mean nothing. And you gotta realize that, I've gotta, gotta push that um, because I see people make this mistake all the time. All right, let's start this thing up. Put it on max AC. You know, fan speed two, three, get some airflow across the EVAP. Full cold, okay? Now let's go check the compressor. Now with the AC clutch and compressor running, look at the difference now once you check it dynamically. It's very, very obvious on the low side especially that there is a problem with the charge level of the vehicle. Before, you really couldn't tell. Now, it's very, very obvious. There it is, proof in the pudding that the static pressures cannot be trusted. I cannot drive that home enough. You saw we had 25 ounces in the system, which was correct, and then we dropped it down to three ounces and the pressures did not change that much static. Turn the system on, dynamic, and all of a sudden, there's a totally different story going on there. All right, that's number two in my AC Diagnostics series. There's gonna be a lot more to come. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, you learned a little something, and I'll see you next time.